Hi everyone, I'm Scott Munson, superintendent in the Marshall Public School District. Uh, today I have the privilege of having Bruce Remy, the activities director for the Marshall Public Schools, uh, here to talk a little bit about our activities program in general, um, something that many of you may not know about, which is uh, our activities leadership team. And then, and then this year, a new focus on something that uh, we're calling life as a tiger and, and just some exciting things going on. So, Bruce, thanks a lot for being here today. I know this isn't your cup of tea necessarily, yeah. but uh, this is really good information that I'm excited for our community to hear about, largely because, you know, our activities program, everything from marching band to uh, swimming to tennis, football, volleyball, basketball, everything in between. Um, it, you know, we have a, a very supportive community and they see a lot of things, but sometimes they don't always know all the work that goes into it and, and just the, the real high quality uh, programs that we have available and the hard work that you and others do for our activities program. So um, this slide right here, Bruce, just, just maybe cover sort of some things that uh, uh, encompass our activities program from, from your perspective, what, what it consists of and whatnot. And then we'll talk about activities leadership team, and then we'll talk about life as a tiger. Great, thanks. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to come and visit about our activities program. I'm always excited to be able to share kind of the things that we do. We certainly feel fortunate to have had the support of the community and the school district for a lot of years and uh, certainly have had a lot of successful kids come through mm -hmm. our programs and, and it's always enjoyable to, to get a chance to share some of those things. Um, like you alluded to earlier, we do have kind of a, a robust collection of academic, athletic, fine art programs that, that a lot of our students participate in at, at MHS. Routinely, on an annual basis, we have over 75% of our students participating in something um, extracurricular. So they're, they're there early, they're there before school, they're there after school, they're there in the evenings. Um, they put in an awful lot of time, and we're really proud about the success they've had, whether that's conference championships, um, you know, qualifying for state tournaments, mm -hmm. section tournaments. We've had kids compete at the national level and things like uh, marching bands, a good example. Um, FFA, BPA, uh, so we're really proud of that. And you know, we've, we feel like we have a, an extremely qualified staff who puts in a tremendous amount of time. Um, you know, we have over 100 staff positions in our activities department um, mm -hmm. filled by, you know, roughly, I think the last count I took, 72 different people filling over sure. 100 staff positions. So. They put in a lot of extra time and effort to, to help provide experiences for kids, and, and we're certainly excited about everything that they do. You know, and I would echo that, Bruce. I think shows like this are a good opportunity for us to really give that shout out to our coaches, advisors, and directors, and everyone who uh, works so hard behind the scenes to, to provide the opportunities that our student participants and student athletes get. Um, you and I have talked frequently about, and I know we're taking a little bit of a sidebar here, but we've talked frequently about that 75% number. And, and, and some years it's higher, some years it's a little bit lower, but the importance of that number because of the sort of the byproducts of kids being involved in activities. We know that their grades are typically better. They come to school more often. They stay out of trouble and, and, and stay out of the office and, and different things like that. And, and um, those are the things that, that we really strive for. And I know you support that, as, as does your activities leadership team, but you support just getting kids into activities. And, you know, at, a, at another time or another segment, I, I would like to have you come back and talk about some of the things that we've added in the last three to five years to, to try to continue to boost that number up. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of folks maybe don't know about the, the Clay Target League, for example, and that in itself is really exciting, uh, I think, because it, it draws a different type of student who may not be one who's going to run fast, jump high, throw, shoot, or catch a ball or whatever. So um, that would be a, another thing to talk about. Um, Bruce, as, as we kind of slide into talking about activities leadership team, we've had and you can answer this question because I don't know, but we've had an activities leadership team for a number of years. 
Uh, you meet with them frequently and, and you certainly are in charge of providing the leadership to our activities program, but, but these folks, uh, they, they certainly help you. You meet with them often. Talk about that concept and, and sort of what your conversations and your meetings are like. Yeah, very much a mirror of what we have in all of our school buildings. You know, each site has a, a site leadership team. Mm -hmm. Um, that those are elected positions. Um, they're voted on by their peers. They apply to be on the activities leadership team and their peers have a chance to, to vote them to those positions. And, and I really, I joke with this team every year when we, we meet once a month, um, most often, once in a while, a little more if necessary, yeah. but typically about once a month we meet and, and uh, for activities leadership team, we typically meet at 7 a.m. on a on a Wednesday morning because so many of them are coaching after school, we right. can't really fit those in. And I joke with them often that they probably dread having that 7 a.m. meeting. I, I really look forward to it. It's a chance for me to, to bounce some ideas off of people um, that we don't always have a chance to do. So, uh, you know, last year, our, our team members, um, you can see consisted of Wayne Ivers, who's our, our marching band and, and band director at Marshall High School, Blaine Schneibley, Dan Westby, Terry Ballman, uh, Chase Pollock, Michael Weiss, Brenda Kellen, Rick Purrington. So we have a good cross section of people. We have, you know, representation from all of our different building levels, mm -hmm. west side, uh, elementary level, middle level, high school level. We have head coaches, assistant coaches. We have fine arts people. Um, so it's a good cross section of all the different areas that our activities uh, department deals with. And, and I think this isn't called the sports leadership team. It's an activities leadership team. And like you talked about, there's a, a good uh, cross-representation of, of different people in different roles for that particular purpose, just to make sure that it's an all-encompassing focus on not just the sports, which, <clears throat> excuse me, oftentimes end up in the newspaper, but everything. The next couple of slides, Bruce, talk a little bit about some of the things that uh, are kind of, again, uh, key components to our activities program. I'll just kind of let you cover those. Yeah, you know, some of the things that we work on as a group, activities leadership team for a long time, um, kind of our goals, we're always looking for ways to in increase our school spirit. We're looking for things that help unify our programs, um, reinforce our beliefs, the values that our school board and our school district develop, um, looking for character development always, um, you know, participating in activities, you talked about it earlier, there's a lot of national research out there about uh, students who participate in some sort of an activity have generally higher GPAs, yep. their attendance better, um, they go on to achieve higher levels of, you know, scholarships, uh, higher education, uh, but we, we really talk about the life skills that can be taught through activities that in a lot of instances can't be taught maybe as well in a classroom setting. Right. Yep. And, and that's one of the things that's, that's so important to us. So one of our, our goals recently was to try and create some common language. How do we talk about across all of our activities um, kind of a, a common language of what we want that experience to be like? Um, feel like all of our programs for years have done a good job of instilling some of those life skills in, in their programs, but how can we better drive those things home for our students? Mm -hmm. And that kind of led to, you know, just taking a look at what are the goals of participating in, in high school activities. And when you survey kids and, and both locally and the national research will tell you, kids like to participate because they, they're looking to develop their skills. They want to get better. Mm -hmm. um, they want to compete. There, there's, a, there's a competitiveness to a lot of, and not just our sports, you know. Um, you can scratch that competitive itch in Knowledge Bowl or math team or a number of different yep. ways. Um, they want to learn some life skills. They want to spend time with their friends. They want it to be enjoyable. They want to have some fun, and, and they want to make some memories. And, you know, as you talk to people after they've graduated, they come back, whatever, <clears throat> you hear a lot of stories about, their experiences through activities, whether it was a bus ride or a, a meal they ate at a restaurant somewhere or the overnight hotel trip. Um, those are things not often you get in 
10th grade biology. I mean, those yep. are things that, that we can create for students that are lasting memories. Absolutely. Nothing against 10th grade biology. Correct. But yeah, let's, yeah, we need to, <laughs> otherwise we'll be getting a, a little bit of uh, grief from our biology teachers. But you, you talked about kind of that common language, Bruce, and that's a good transition into life as a tiger. Uh, your activities leadership team, and this has all been presented to the school board, but the activities leadership team kind of came up with, with, and I'm sure you had a, a long conversation about what, is the, what does a T stand for, or an R, or a G, or whatever, and this was the final kind of final list, but what was the discussion to get to this point? And I know we'll go through each letter here in a moment, but how did, how did this become the product of all the work of ALT and yourself? It was really a result of just kind of talking about what are some of the life skills that we all teach? What are some of the things that all of us do in our different activities, whether it's Brenda with BPA or whether it's Rick in speech or, or whether it's Dan on the volleyball court? Um, what are we trying to teach kids and, and what do kids want to learn? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we generated kind of a, a whole list, put them up on, on the board and just said, you know, these are some of the life skills that we teach. And, and as we started to kind of take a look at some of that stuff, making an acronym for TIGER seemed to be a, an appropriate way to maybe unify it or, or maybe uh, pull it together mm -hmm. in a manner that we can better communicate that. And so we came up with the the five words, um, and we had a number of them. When we decided to kind of make the acronym out of TIGER, we had several T words and several I words, and so we had to kind of vote them down and sure. refine the list until we came up with the five that we felt were a good reflection of what we want all of our TIGERS to, to represent. And as, so as we go into, for example, the, the, the T for teamwork, and, and you can, uh, you can read or, or kind of summarize what's on here, but, but talk a little bit about when we say to a student athlete or a, or a student participant that teamwork is important, what's it all about? And, and again, what's that message from our activities leadership team uh, in terms of teamwork? Yeah, one of the things that we want to stress to our kids is you might be a member of a team, you know, on, on the football field or, or on the hockey rink, whatever, but Somewhere down the road in your life, you're going to be a member of a, a team in a lot of different ways. You're going to be a member of a team maybe a, in your job, um, maybe in your household. Wherever, you're going to work with other people. And learning some of the skills of what it means to be a, a good teammate, being, something, being a part of something that's bigger than you are, uh, being a contributing member. Um, you embrace that idea of, of being a team first player and accepting whatever role you need to do to help the success of the team. Super. And then and then as we go into integrity again we'll we'll talk about each each of these letters but uh, this is one that I don't know that I would have chosen for Tiger. I'm glad it's in there and I'm not intending that to be critical but but again what it, what is the integrity part of life as a Tiger mean? Yeah, just you know, as we talk about how we want our student athletes to kind of represent the community, um, we want them to, to always think about they're representing something larger than themselves. They're representing their, their school, their team, their community, their, uh, the Tigers as a whole. And, and you want to always stress to them that mm -hmm. every choice that they make is all about what their character shows to other people. And, and having integrity means you're making decisions that are going to be true to yourself. They're going to do the right thing all the time, no matter who's watching. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I like the grit one because I, I, through officiating, I often see uh, young, young people, young students, student athletes, whomever, who uh, times get tough and, and grit is important. So. Again, lead us through that a little bit, if you would. You know, I'd, I met with all of the winter sports kind of at the beginning of their season, and, and I talked with each of them, and I shared with them. I said, you guys, what you do is, is hard work. Um, mm -hmm. You're a full-time student. You're going, you're going to school eight hours a day. You're going to have homework on top of that, and now you're taking on the challenge um, by choice to – to be a team member and you're going to put in more time, you're going to travel, you're going to get home late, you're going to get run down, you're physically 
putting a lot of stress on your body, it does get hard. Mm -hmm. um, and the way you, you develop as a person, um, and hopefully you develop some skills that are gonna help you down the road, you gotta have a little grit. You gotta sometimes, you know, roll up your sleeves and persevere. You gotta be, you know, show some self-discipline. You gotta be willing to push through some things once in a while when maybe everything's not going real great. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's a, you know, that's a good skill that can help people no matter what profession they pursue down the road someday or no matter what their relationship is with, with whoever. I think another part of this, and, and maybe it kind of lines up with the excellence aspect as well, is in addition to everything that you just said that, that our student athletes and student participants kind of accept when they, when they go out for an activity, um, we also hold them to a higher standard uh, in terms of, you know, you, your, your grade point average needs to be a certain level in order to participate. You can't get in trouble in order to participate and continue to be a team member. So I, I really like the, the grit and the excellence and, and go ahead and talk about what excellence means in terms of being a Tiger. Yeah. Um, we've been fortunate um, to have a lot of excellent teams, a lot of excellence in our performances, but the pursuit of that excellence, I, I really appreciate, you know, marching band holds the pursuit of excellence every fall. Mm -hmm their competition at home and to me that that uh, name is so appropriate for what we want high school kids to be doing the pursuit of it you're not always going to get there um, right. and that's part of learning and uh, but having that as the goal and and having the drive and the, the desire to try and pursue getting better no matter what level you're at always trying to pursue that excellence and, and achieve the best is what we want to continue to try and instill in kids. And it's really, it's interesting to me when, you, when I read or hear about or even get to talk to student athletes primarily about um, personal bests and, and how they continue to, oh, I got, a, I got a PB last week or whatever. And 10 years ago, I'd have thought peanut butter. And, and now I know that it's a personal best, but just how they feel good about that. And yeah, they might not have uh, finished first or in the top 10 or whatever, but they feel good about the excellence that's their own personal best that contributed to a team. So uh, very appropriate choice. And then the last one in Tiger is the respect piece and, and very important, not just in our activities program, but our, but our school district in general. How does the respect aspect fit into the activities program, Bruce? We, we stress to all of our teams that, you know, respect is something that should be unconditional. Um, it's not something that anybody has to ask for or desire. It should be given unconditionally, whether that's to opponents, to officials, to judges, to the, the drive through worker that you stop at McDonald's after the game. Um, we want our, our teams to always, you know, exude that respect to whoever they encounter. And, and again, just feel like that's something that we want that, to instill in our, in our students um, in all of their communications with, inter, and interactions with everybody. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I don't believe it's happening this year, Bruce, you can correct me, but in, in the past, uh, sports officials used to have the opportunity to, to rate each of the teams and the host site and and really respect was a big part of that just how how were the kids how were the coaches how were the fans and everything and and I know I as a superintendent in the 16 years that uh, that I've been in that role have always paid attention to that because I always wanted our, our teams our coaches our athletic or activities director our fans I always wanted them to ha have high ratings because it really does focus on the respect aspect of things. And and our ratings have been very good. I know you've shared those with me the past few years and I've been very pleased. Nobody else sees those probably except for you and I and maybe the coaches or whatever, but uh, those ratings have been very positive. And, and that's a compliment to, to yourself, to our student athletes, student participants, our, our coaches, uh, uh, fans, everybody that's part of the program. So Bruce, the, the rollout of things. This was an idea that was generated, Life as a Tiger, sort of last year at the end of the year. Um, there was a little bit of work done over the summer. 
You talked about meeting with uh, winter sports here recently, but talk about a, a little bit at the start of the year how this was rolled out, the Life as a Tiger approach, concept, and focus. Yeah, we gathered all of our fall activities together at one time. Um, they all started practice the same day. We, we brought them all together and we kind of talked through the whole acronym of Tiger and what Life as a Tiger was all about and um, that that was really something we had hoped to help better refine the communicating that we've been doing for a while, yep. just maybe not in a more succinct manner. Um, and you know, one of the things we were able to do, we had some t-shirts printed up that had the Life of a Tiger logo on it and, and they were excited about that. And it's, it's nice to see some of those around the school. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a good reminder for everybody that, you know, that's what being a tiger is all about. And you did that with winter sports as well? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, wh where do we go from here, Bruce? Uh, you know, there's really, I see the possibilities being endless, but what do you view as, as maybe some of the next steps in this uh, process to continue to build on what's already been done? Yeah, we've talked about that at, at leadership team about, you know, what, what are some other things that we can do to continue the momentum? Um, Talked about you know getting some more banners and signage and and get maybe printing things in programs. Um, talked about getting some students to maybe do some videos and things like that mm -hmm. that they could talk a little about what life as a tiger is all about and and get those out on social media those sorts of things as an option. So um, I guess from here our goal is just continue to we kind of unveiled it this year. And uh, if you think about the way it's going to filter through, you know, some of these students who heard it for the first time this year, they're at a young age and they're going to continue to help um, build that momentum as they continue as participants the next few years. So, so two questions, although they're similar, Bruce. Now that we've had roughly three, four, five months with Life as a Tiger, what, what have you heard from the activities leadership team and or other members of the of the 70 plus coaches advisors and directors what positive or negative things we can build off of what what's been the feedback from from the adults let's say yeah feedback has been very positive um appreciate having you know kind of something that everybody can refer to if if i'm a multi activity participant you know maybe i'm a junior or senior and i'm participating in the fall musical and i'm in the marching band and in the winter I'm in the basketball team and in the spring maybe I'm on the clay target team as well as running track. Mm -hmm. When I can hear all of those coaches and advisors uh, using the same language and, and talking about the same things, it really helps me understand maybe one, the importance of it, uh, but two, the value of, yeah, you know, this, this is something I really do need to pay attention to. Um, like any of us, when we hear things over and over and over, you start to take a little more mm -hmm. stock in, in what's being said. So um, just the consistency of it's been a positive. Um, like to see that around. It's something that's fairly easy to refer to. Um, you know, if, if you do want to make some sort of a correction on a behavior, it's pretty easy to, to say, hey, life is a tiger. Keep it in mind. Um, check yourself, those sorts of things. And, and you talk about the repetition and, and consistency amongst programs. I think uh, in advertising, there, there's a, a slogan that you have to say the, the same thing seven times before it actually sinks in. So this is really, it, it's not advertising, right? But it's the same concept like you alluded to. The more times kids hear it, from all of the programs, the more it's going to sink in. And, and these are important life skills, really. How about the kids, that, the, the students, I shouldn't call them kids, the student participants, student athletes that you've had a chance to visit with informally or formally, Bruce? Have you heard good things from them? Or are they still kind of in the, yeah, we're not really sure stage, which would be fine, too? Yeah. I mean, I think some of them are like, hmm, never really thought of it this way before. Mm -hmm. um, it helps us. They like the T-shirt. Absolutely. Uh, you know, anytime you can can put some new logos and things like that out there, um, that helps generate some interest, and that was one of the goals. So, uh, feedback's been good. And and you mentioned the logo, and we can we can touch on it briefly. We uh, our district, which was largely led by you, went through a branding and logo process last year, and and you see in the 
in the presentation, uh, one of our new logos and, and those, I think that process and the, the resulting logos and fonts and colors uh, have been a really positive output uh, or outcome. And, and even I, I was showing this to someone a, a couple weeks ago and I said, do you notice anything about the tiger head? And they looked at it for a little bit and they said no. And I said, do you see the M in there? And they were like, oh, that's really cool. So uh, it was just, I think life as a tiger and, and the whole new logo and, and brand has been a nice tie in together. Um, any final thoughts, Bruce? I know we only have only a couple minutes left, but any final thoughts about you know, activities program, life as a tiger, the logo and branding, coaches, advisors, and directors, anything really that comes to mind or you want to share? Yeah, I would just say, you know, we, we're fortunate. Um, Marshall's been uh, a community that has embraced student activities for a long time, and, mm -hmm. and uh, that doesn't happen overnight, and it doesn't happen by chance. There's a lot of people who put a lot into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it starts at the young ages. Um, there's a lot of volunteers and a lot of programs um, that help students get their feet wet in these things. And, and we're certainly fortunate to have directors, advisors, coaches who work with those programs and help establish kind of the, the climate and the, the structure that allows students to really embrace extracurricular activities. And, mm -hmm. and it becomes a uh, kind of a way of life for those students. And, um, we're, we're fortunate that our school continues to, our, our school board and, and the community continue to support um, the programs that we have. Um, it's not that way in every community and, and we're fortunate to be able to continue to do that. Uh, obviously, we, we hold firm a belief that student participation is a good thing and it, it leads to better outcomes for students down the road. That's why we do what we do. And, mm -hmm. and for us to continue to be able to provide all the experiences and opportunities takes a lot of support, takes a lot of time, takes a lot of uh, man hours. And we certainly thank everybody who is behind that. You know, you, you talked briefly or touched on this and uh, the, the T in life as a tiger is about teamwork and, and um, talk about our, our youth programs and, and all the uh, associations, MABA, and, and just all of the associations, uh, community education, and, and the collaboration and teamwork that we have with them. And, and parents, you know, the, the, we, we, give our cre we give the credit to our students, which they deserve, and our teams, but yet there's parents who have done so much to get them to that point too. So um, I know I want to take that opportunity to make sure that community ed, all of our, all of our youth booster type associations uh, and everything that they do for our, our younger students and student athletes and the parents. I, I always, when I have an opportunity, I like to thank the parents too, because without them, we don't have students obviously. And without their support, uh, our students, don't have the same opportunities that they do. So, so Bruce, on behalf of, of me, um, you know, please extend a, a thank, thank you and, and gratitude for the work that activities leadership team uh, has done with and, and for you, uh, you know, and, and please do the same with our coaches, advisors, directors, uh, our fans, and certainly our student athletes and, and student participants. And, and thank you for the work that you do. Uh, it's not an easy job, but you do it well, and, and uh, you're extremely well respected in our community and, and the region and the state. So keep it up. Thanks much. Thanks for joining me. You today. bet. Uh,